Okay, let's introduce our first guest for tonight. He's got a great hairstyle, a big leap, kicks goals, and is a rising star at the <laughs> Kangaroos. Please welcome Big Ben Brown. <laughs> and welcome, Ben. Great to have you on the show. And I always, when I watch you on TV, I always think about Gilbert last time you were on the show and he said how much he loved your hair. <laughs> Do you love his hair, Gilly? Because you used to have well, hair like that, didn't you? No, he, he looks like one of the brothers, but he's a different colour, that's all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now, Ben, on the weekend, North Melbourne, they were a little bit disappointing against the Swans. I thought you might get over the line there, but uh, what happened? Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, they came out firing. They hit us pretty hard. Um, and uh, I suppose went after our captain from the start of the start of the day and we didn't respond well enough, so... You know, it was disappointing, but um, we've, you know, there's always next week in footy, which is good, and this week we'll, we'll try and bounce back. Uh, Benny, look, thanks for coming on the show. It's always great to have you on. And, you know, I mean, there's been a bit of talk about North Melbourne. You, you know, even though you've lost them games early, you were still playing some, some terrific footy, and you probably could have turned that into maybe two wins instead of two losses. So yeah. all of a sudden you come 4-4 or you whatever, 5-3 what, or whatever. Um, you aren't too far away. Jared Waite, I thought that was... Big loss for you last week because it put yeah. so much pressure on you. Because I did that game, and yeah. you know, I mean, obviously with Jared there, it just makes a difference for you in the forward line. He's back this week. That should make a big difference. Yeah, definitely. Having a guy of Wadey's calibre come back into the into the yeah. team, it definitely helps me out. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's footy smarts and that kind of thing. I've I've learned a lot from him since he got to the footy club. But yeah. just on your other point, I think you know, a lot's been made of the the footy this year and how even the competition's been. I think it's great for everyone that everyone feels like they can get a win every week. Um, you know, we we definitely feel like that too. But ben, did, did, when you talk about Sydney coming out and having a bit of a go at you after your big win against uh, Adelaide, they actually come out. They actually hunted you. Sometimes when when you have a big win like that, so I'd come out and just hunt you. Did you feel that like they just really were at you all the time? Yeah, definitely. And, and we went, you know, we went. Did into respond that, to it? We went into that game uh, wanting to be the, the the team hunting the opposition, and you know it didn't turn out that way. Um, sometimes you can go in with all, all the mindset you want, but um, you know Sydney came in with a, with a better mindset, obviously, and, and really hit us hard. So you know we needed to respond to that. Um, we didn't overall in, in that game. But, you know, we can learn from that. You can always mm. learn from your, mm. your poorer performances and we try and bounce back this week. I thought it was Tyrone Vickery when he first <laughs> <laughs> sat down. Have you ever, ever decided to cut your hair at all? Tyrone's had his hair cut off. Yeah, I've, I've heard about Hairdo that. Kid. I've heard about that. You've never thought uh, about yourself? No. Because I'll have some of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not at the moment, KV, but maybe, maybe later on I'll... I'll uh, hook you up. It, seem, it seemed to me the most disappointing thing last week, and I saw North the week before, Doug, down in Tassie, 10 goals for in the first quarter. It was the most amazing opening quarter of footy. But last week, you got killed by the midfield last week. Josh Kennedy had something like about, I don't know, 14 or 15 possessions in the first quarter. Mm. Has that been the, you know, part of the discussion this week at North Melbourne that, you know, if you, if you can't match them in the midfield, you, you're not going to have any chance of winning? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, th I think we got beaten in the contested ball, mm. um, you know, pretty soundly on the weekend. It was, it was a lot of things <coughs> that we... We, we took out of it and we had to learn from. Um, but, yeah, definitely that, that midfield battle. I think the, the midfielders, you know, copped that one on the chin yeah. from last week. And, and Swallow's uh, back, is he, this week? Um, I've, well, I, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I haven't, haven't actually looked at the team yet. But, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, he's yeah, no, he'll be, not playing. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll, be <coughs> he'll be important for us this year, absolutely. He's a, he's a, he's a gun. He's a good player. Mm -hmm. yeah, Brownie, we know you're a proud Tasmanian and... Um, seeing the paper last week, the week before, uh, Nick Rewalt talking about um, Tasmania having a footy team, um, mm. why I won't. Um, do you have any um, thoughts or theories why Tasmania hasn't been brought up more often? And um, do you have um, any understanding of if they're in the future or anything like that? I, I think I'd love for in, in the future for, for Tassie to have a team. I think they're the only state at the moment that, do, that doesn't have a team. Um, mm. uh, I suppose I'm a bit conflicted because, you know, North Melbourne's obviously got our, our connection down there. We play a couple of games down there a year and we've got a great supporter base down there. We've just launched our Next Gen Academy down there as well. So, um, But it is something that um, I suppose in the, in, in the medium to longer term, um, you know, with the two teams that have just come in, GWS and Gold Coast, it's difficult to expand again um, so soon. But I think in the future, I'd love to, I'd love to see Tasmania the, have a the team. The support's definitely there. When we play there, um, there's always a lot of support in Tasmania. Um, in Launceston, and we see you guys in Hobart, the crowd's always packed there. So we know the people love it. And they, do you, so do you see the support when you guys, you know, in and around Tasmania as well? Absolutely. It's, it's a footballing state. It always has been. There's a lot of, a lot of culture and a lot of heritage, um, you know, down in Tasmania for football and... 
You know, it's been around a long time. Tasmanians love their football, and we definitely see yeah. that. Now, how, ben, how would how would they go? Because Hawthorne have got the games there with the contract. North, North, Mel North, North Melbourne's yeah. got the contract yeah. there. What would they do if Tasmania come in? Would they go, how about Lord Seston? What, what are they going to do? they lose their game? Bye-bye North. Bye-bye North. Exactly. But, but what do you, what so, do you... that's, so what's the scenario yeah. there then? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you expect that Tasmania should have their own football team instead of having plonking two AFL clubs in Tassie? Don't you think more Tasmanians would support a solely Tasmanian team? Yeah, well, I think that's it's a difficult one to answer, I suppose. Mm. And, the, you know, there's been a lot of talk about it, um, you know, whether it's, whether it's economic-based or, you know, um, other reasons that have been brought up. Um, maybe it just wasn't the right time. Um, so the AFL thought, and I'm sure that the the key the key people in in those areas did a lot of thinking about the issue. You'd think the AFL propping up GWS and the Gold Coast could prop up a side in Tasmania. But anyway, let's talk about the footy. Now you've got a very unique run up, I've noticed, for goal on the weekend. And uh, have you always done this? Let's just check it out because it's quite a long run up here. You're really in the middle of the ground to take a kick. You know, 15 metres inside 50 there. And it's a nice... Uh, is that something that's just developed over the time? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's been pretty similar since I, since I got to the club. I think I haven't really tweaked too much um, with it. But it, it was something that before my um, time at AFL level I, I definitely worked on. And it's just what, what works for me and that's what I've gone with. Now, straight, we've put together a couple of other up. long run-ups. So, hang on a sec, Sean. Uh, take a look at these because I wanted to check these out. You've got tiptoes with the tulips here. Look, oh, oh, oh. Shock Bang and uh, shock and run-up, but accuracy should have done it on Friday night because he missed three close ones. And then, of course, the great man, Dennis Silly, started on the fence <laughs> and he comes in and that's what you call a run-up. And uh, But uh, there's one, there's actually <laughs> one run-up that really caught my eye the last couple of years, KB. Ahmad Saad from uh, St yes. Kilda. Now, look at this one. This is what you call a run-up, Ben. He's, he's outdone you by the country mile. This is how many steps he's taken before he actually, actually kicks the ball. He's um, supposed to kick the ball within 30 seconds. He's gone for half, <laughs> half a week so far. Doesn't matter as long as he kicks it. Doesn't matter how long well, he takes. Have a look. <laughs> he misses it. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know, you're probably not old enough, but in days gone by, someone like Gary Dempsey, this would be his run-up kicking for goal, just two or three steps here. Look at this. Big Gary Dempsey. Didn't kick too many goals, KB. The flat punt and bang right through the middle off two steps. That's how they used to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any chance of you doing that in the next couple uh, of weeks? I actually, had a, I actually had a guy come up to me, I think it was in Tasmania, who was campaigning for me to bring back the flat punt. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm going to go for it. but Peter uh, Hudson. <laughs> that was Peter Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Peter, was it? Now, Ben, you've got the North Melbourne uh, Indigenous Round Jumper with you. So oh. the jumper was de designed by Sarita King, together with Lindsay Thomas, Jed Anderson and Daniel Wells. It represents all the Indigenous players who have worn the North Melbourne Jumper, folks. <laughs> Isn't that great? And... Uh, Actually, the launch is next Tuesday night at a gallery in uh, Collingwood, and I'm the MC for that night, so I'd be uh, an honour to be able to uh, help present that jumper. So it looks very good there.